the first thing that you're going to need to do is open the program Google Drawings. The way that you access this is by going to Chrome, opening your drive, and hitting New. Under New, you're going to select More, and then click Google Drawings. Easy as that. Once you have that done, you're going to title your drawing. Since it's going to be a self-portrait of yourself, you can put your name and then portrait. So I'm going to call mine Miss Tatlow Portrait. To open your photo, you're going to click Insert Image and then Upload from Computer. Because you saved it to your desktop, you can just click it there and click Open. So once you've done that, you're going to start adjusting it to fit the canvas. The canvas is the checkered background that you see here. So what you can do is click this little corner here that has the little lines on it and drag it all the way in to the edge of your image. Once you have that done, we're going to copy the image. Click it and then click Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste. Once you've done that, you want to line it up exactly to the left of your other image. So what these are for, the one on the left is for tracing, the one on the right is for lining it up. This tool is going to be really useful for the whole program this whole time, the zoom button. So if you zoom in a whole lot, you'll be able to trace everything. So make sure you're looking at this left side to do this. So you're going to start by tracing your face. The main tool that we're using is the polyline tool, which is right under this drop down bar. When you have that done, you're going to need to start outlining things. So you can do that by clicking slowly. You slowly outline the edge of your object. Make sure your clicks are evenly spaced out because if you put them too close together, it's not going to work. But it's going to turn into this outlined piece of color. So once you do that, you're going to click this button here and remove the outline by clicking transparent. And then you can make it whatever color you want. I want mine to be kind of a skin tone. So I'm going to go with like this peachy color here. And then you're just going to deselect it. Um, once you've done that, you can adjust the points more if you don't like how you did it by double clicking it. And you can just move them around wherever you want them to go. If you have any touch ups to make. Once you've done that, you're going to click it and slide it right over to your other image. I didn't mind by pressing the arrow on the keyboard, but you can also just adjust it by clicking it. The beauty of this project is that if you don't like how your face looks in the picture, you don't even have to draw your face. It's kind of the style of the entire artwork. So then you're just going to keep doing that as you get more details. So to give you an example, here's what's going to happen if you click too quickly. If you try to make your lines too close together, it's going to deselect like this, which is not good. You want to make sure that everything is connected. So again, work really slowly. If things do disconnect, it just means you need to zoom in even more so that you are able to work as slowly as you need to. So I'm going to click slowly around this object, same thing as before. And we're layering from the bottom up. That's a big part of this project. So you want to put this, the bottom layers down first and then slowly work things over the top. It's going to make things a whole lot easier. Outlining my hair. All the way around it. And because it's a geometric portrait, it doesn't need to be super exact. Then you're going to close it. So I'm going to make this transparent and I'm going to give myself my blonde hair. And then again, you can just click it and scoot it over to the other side. So keep doing this. Make sure you get your clothes done, your shoes, every single detail. We're just putting down the base colors. And when you line things up, if they're not perfect like this, you can just double click it again and adjust the points just to make it kind of fit a little bit better. So I'm going to finish the base colors and then I'll come back. Something else you want to notice, if you have a color that doesn't show up in the color tool here, you can hit custom and then you can find the color here by yourself. So I'm finding a nice hot pink just by adjusting it here. Okay, now that I have some base colors, I saved a couple things to show you in this tutorial. So one thing is drawing your hands. 
So if we zoom in a whole lot, we're going to do this in the easiest way possible. I know that drawing hands can be really hard, so you're going to want to zoom in a lot. If you guys want to be more detailed with this, you're more than welcome. But if you click the polyline tool again, basically all that I ask is that you get the general outline. You don't have to add in your fingernails or any more details than just the outline. And you don't even need to go for each individual finger here. You just can outline the general edge like this. And again, zooming in really close is going to help you so much for getting this shape to look accurate. And then you're going to close it. And then select your skin tone, and that is all you need to do. If you think it looks weird, you can double click it and just kind of adjust some of these points to make it look a little better. All right, so now that you have all the base colors down, you want to make sure that you start adding a few more details to make things pop. You're going to want to add details in your hair, and then as a style choice, you want to add your eyebrows. Maybe if you have glasses, you want to add those in. Just add in all those little details to make everything fun. Part of the style is that you don't have to add your face, but adding the eyebrows is going to make it stand out a little bit more. The more details you get in, the better this is going to look. So if you zoom in a lot, I'm going to show you how to do some of those things. All right, so zoom in really, really close. I'm going to zoom in even a little closer. And even though it's a little blurry, we'll still be able to add in some of this. So if we click the polyline tool, even though you can only see part of my eyebrow, I kind of know how it goes, and it goes a little down like this. You can make them a little bolder than your eyebrows actually are if you would like. Remove the outline and pick a color that works for you. I don't really see any that look like my eyebrows, so I'm going to hit custom. Go over here to find a sort of brown color. And then kind of select down here until I find one that I like. There we go. And then hit OK. And then once again, you can kind of adjust it as you go. So then go ahead and do the other eyebrow as well. So now I'm going to start adding some more tones through my hair. Even if you have short hair, you'll still be able to do this. And I can show you on the Zoom if you need a little extra help. But what you're going to do is Take the polyline tool. You don't even really need to look at yourself. You can just go directly on to this side of the portrait and just start finding where your part is. My part is about here. So I'm just going to go through and start making a line that kind of fits my hair texture. Bring it all the way up and kind of match it on the other side and then close it at the front. Remove the outline and go to your hair color and make a slightly darker color. This is going to add a lot of dimension. And then you're going to do the same thing and just keep going through. The more of this you add, the more interesting and dynamic it is going to look. And you can choose different colors too. It doesn't all have to be this color. You could go even darker than that. You could do some light ones, some highlights, stuff like that. So here's what the hair is going to look like when you're done. Again, you can kind of adjust it if you have anything that you need to fix up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep adjusting everything else. So if you zoom in, you're going to start to notice that there are certain parts that aren't quite perfect yet, like here where these two pieces of clothing don't meet. So again, you can double click it and just adjust it until it goes to where you think it needs to go to kind of close those little gaps. So just go through and kind of perfect all the little imperfections throughout your art. A few other fun tools you can use. If you want to make your clothes look a little different, and you can select two things at once by clicking one object, hitting shift on the keyboard and holding it, and then clicking another. You can make a gradient. So if you go to your colors and click gradient, and just click any one of these, it's going to make things look shiny. So it looks kind of cool if you did leggings or anything like that. So now what you're going to do is you can delete your reference photo, and you can delete your background photo. And even then you might see a few other little imperfections that you want to fix. So go ahead and do that. You're going to drag it from this little plus sign in the far left top corner and drag it all the way to the bottom. If you're not able to draw, drag it all the way, you can scroll down and just adjust it with these little arrows. So now you're going to hit the outline button here, make it transparent. Then you're going to click Arrange, Order, and Send to Back. 
So now we have a nice color in the background. I'm going to change my color to make it look a little more interesting. I think I'm going to go with a pale pink. All right, once you've done that, feel free to add patterns, add whatever you want, but what you do need to add is your next. So you're going to go to insert and then word art. I'm going to type in my name. You guys can put your first name only, or you can put your last name if you really want to. And you're going to adjust it and figure out a good place for it. Because of the way my camera is set up, I have a lot of space in the top here, so I think that would be a great way to fill it. And we're not going to leave it with this boring Arial font. Look through and find a font that you really, really like. Make it interesting. Make it fun. Do not just handwrite your name or it's going to look messy. I'm going to use this cool one. Feel free to adjust the size, make it fit, and pick a color that you really like. And try your best to center it. I'm removing the outline. So there we go. Now we are pretty much done with this project. So what you're going to do is hit File, Download, and then click JPEG Image. When you do that, it's going to show up here. Then you can click and drag it to your desktop once again. So now you can see that it appeared right here. Once you have that done, you can go to Schoology and submit it the same way you would any assignment. You're just going to upload it from the desktop and hit Submit.